This is Spencer from The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Jim O'Hare, uh, the star of Middleman, which yeah. is, I believe, world premiering here at Seattle? World premiere at the Seattle. Yeah, we were, uh, we'd been offered a bunch of different places, and I didn't know this, but it turns out it's very important where you premiere. That's uh, what they said. Turns out yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. and so um, when Seattle came through, it, it was a no-brainer. Well, so we said we'll do it. It's, it's like was it the Last Crusade, where the the old monk is like, "You have chosen wisely." <laughs> wisely so, exactly. So this is, this is. We chose wisely. I think we did uh, because there was some. I, I was getting nervous because I, I don't. Have, I didn't have control over where we went. And they'd call and say, well, we turned down this one. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. turning down? Like, that seems scary to me. Um, but we were told there was a certain category you wanted to be in. And the first one that came through in that category was Seattle, yes. and we were all over it. Well, that's well, our, our benefit then. Yeah, come in. good. Um, the film is about a man who has comedic aspirations and kind of... Uh, Runs across some detours along the way, I guess would be the, the most general way sure. we can live it so we don't spoil it. Um, one of the things I want to ask you is, as an actor, what is it like sort of trying to pace out those changes as the frustrations grow during the movie? Because it's one of those things that um, if you go too fast, it seems like it could just turn into like a Lloyd Kaufman movie where it's just totally crazy over the top. And right. It's a completely different and that's sort not of what experience. it was supposed to be. Yeah. Whereas this sort of feels like, I guess the best way I could think of it was like uh, like a boiling water where it's, you know, you get, up to, I love that. you get up to 99 degrees and it's all sort of like crazy. But then there's a point where you just cross and you're like, oh, shit, this is, this is <laughs> something boiling. Over. Yeah. It is this is something over. Uh, what is it like as an actor to try and sort of modulate that? Because you you are, quote unquote, the good guy. You are the guy the yeah. audience is rooting for. But at the same time, you have to lead us on this journey before things get too crazy. And we still have to sort of sympathize with your character. Yeah. My character is, uh, his name is Lenny Freeman. And he's a sweet, sweet man. Very who's sweet. really yeah. known nothing in life other than family and he's an accountant and he goes to work every day and thinks they like him more than they do and but he's just a very naive innocent man uh, who takes a journey after his mother passes away and things get out of control that he has never had to deal with in his life like most people haven't to so. be fair like it's stuff that most people, most people have never had <laughs> like, to deal I feel, with i feel like i'd be pretty free <laughs> yes, you'd have every right yeah. so the uh, uh, ned and i the director ned crowley and i the whole you know ned wrote this with me in mind many years ago and the whole thing for me was uh i put all my trust in ned because he's a solid director and he knows me so well he knows what I can do. He knows what my strengths are. And he knew how to play to them. Um, I've been cast, you know, for many years as the big, funny, wacky neighbor or whatever. You know, the Jerry Gergich on Parks, which, was which is awesome. Role. People and, love that. Uh, yeah. My God, I thank God every day for it. Um, but Ned has seen me. We've worked together for over 30 years on different wow, things. Wow, that's so, amazing. Yeah, we did comedy together in Chicago. We began in 1985, I believe. So he knew there was more. And... Uh, he wrote a movie so that I could show there was more, which was amazing. So he kept an eye on the levels. It was all on him. Uh, and I mean, on me too, obviously, but he, uh, he scared me some days. I'd be like, Ned, this isn't right. I don't think this is, we're doing enough or, or whatever, whatever. And then he'd call me down. He'd show me some dailies and go, this is what we're getting. How, and then I would be happy. How challenging is it from like a narrative perspective to do this? Because I'm assuming you guys did not shoot linear, linearly. No. So it's like like one day it's like very like low, like fucked up nest. The next day oh, you're like. One day I'm in a bloody shirt and then and then also at an accountant's office. So, I mean, there's from, may, from murder to, you know, happiness at work. That's the toughest part for an actor. But that's why you need a really good director to tell you where you are what is happening because you can get lost it is so easy to get lost when you were shooting an indie i think we did it i'm off on the days because then there were some pickups but let's say 15 days maybe less wow uh, we, fast. yeah it's fast and so you don't you just have he has to tell you where we are in the script where this is what's happening here's where you're coming from does it benefit to have sort of an extensive tv background though for that kind of stuff because i imagine tv you have to sort of churn it out pretty quickly well it well. is fast but it's you know with tv you can do take after take you know we would do parks in 5 days we would do a, a you know a, a full episode yeah. and then included one or two days out usually you know on locations 
and our first cut was like 42 minutes. So, you know, but it's different. Here, you don't get to do, like in parks, everyone goes, is everyone happy? Everyone's ready to move yeah. on or whatever. Here, it's like, okay, that worked. Let's go. We got to go on to the, you have no money. You have a, a, a crew that's working around the clock for not a lot of money. Um, actors who are doing it for $100 a day because they love the script. Um, so you don't want to abuse that either. You know, you don't want to abuse anybody. Totally, yeah. So uh, it was fast. It was really f way faster than anything I've ever done. Way faster. What is it sort of like working with Andrew and Anne? Um, I was thinking about this before I came in. I was like, they are sort of kind of like the devil and the angel on your yeah. shoulder. One is yeah. like sort of like trying to pull That's you great. back to the yeah. good world. And one yeah. of them's really just like trying Let's to push go. you down. <laughs> um, what is it sort of like trying to cultivate those relationships as actors, especially since you're under such a, a, a time crunch to try and create this project? I mean, obviously you're just like, hey, what's going? Let's go. Like, yeah. let's well, here's, let me tell you a story about Andy uh, and Josh and Anne. Actually, now that I think about all three of them, they were all offered these roles. And because we wanted, we would love to have auditioned them, but we were afraid they're going to be like, no, it's a little indie. You should, all, you know, it's, it's you, tough to you get, get to people to do it. You get to a point where you get offered yeah. when you're a, when you've done a certain amount of work, you get offered roles and it's a lovely, I, you know, I get calls. Will he do this? Will he do that? It's the best. But we thought we can't do that. So, but everyone, each one of them said, no, no, no. I want to audition. I want you to see what I'm going to bring to it. They love the script that much. They wanted to say, cool. here's my take on this. And so with Anne, you know, because, I, I, you know, she's my love interest. I, I never get a love interest. So th that alone is shocking that I'm getting, you know, I, 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 I kiss I know, in you this seem film. To, you seem to be doing pretty well between this and Parks. Well, like, I know, but I don't get the, you know, there's never the love scene yeah, where, you know, and in this one there's yes. a little hanky-panky going on. <laughs> um, and we, we did a scene where we did the scene where we end up kissing, and even at the... At the audition, it was just felt so right. And normally you wouldn't lean in for the kiss at the audition. You would stop there. But we did. It was just so right. Andy, within two seconds, I knew we were together. And if you don't like us, you're screwed. Because, again, it's Andy and I. It's, it's our film. Yeah, you know, as far as yeah. we're in it a lot. Um, and our chemistry was immediate. And so then we went out to lunch and we're talking about it and everything. But I'm also one of these actors. Uh, some will say, oh, well, then he's not a real actor. I can turn it on and off. You know, I can be screaming. I would actually say that's more of being an actor. I, if you're say, I do it. too. I kind of do too. But some people are like, you've got to be in the moment for the whole production. And that ain't me. Um, I like to laugh. I like to joke. And even if I've just done a scene where I've killed somebody, when they yell <laughs> cut, I'm going to make some stupid ass statement to break the tension. And I mean, it uh, seems like it could, it's probably a good thing, especially with a film like this, where it gets some pretty heavy oh, shit by the end. some stuff at the end that is so heavy. Yeah. And I was, you know, an idiot making stupid comments. And that's how I do it, you know, and every actor has their own thing. Luckily, Andrew and, uh, and Anne and Josh McDermott were right on board <laughs> with my style. I mean, it, it is, there's definitely a good chemistry between all of you. And I mean, yeah. it makes sense that since you're involved with sort of the auditioning process that you could sort of cultivate that before the film. Well, and that began. was the other thing. We wanted to make sure that I could, you know, it, it, when they said they wanted to audition, uh, you know, Ned said, do you want to be there? I said, oh, I have to be there. We can't just have them read with a reader. You, th This is too important, yeah. you know. So I was there for all of their stuff. And it just was great because the day would be over and you're like, yes. And I remember even looking over at Ned every once in a while like, you know, this is good. This is good. Uh, one of the interesting things that you mentioned actually is sort of the ability to turn it on and off and stuff. Is it actually harder for you to sort of tone it down for those like stand-up scenes where you're like you're really strained stressed out while you're doing it yeah it seems like i mean you're a very naturally funny guy you really like to how sort of dare be, you yeah. how like, dare you I, I mean i like i like to stir That's the pot it. i like to stir the pot um <laughs> by saying that so uh but like it seems like that actually might be challenging to sort of try and be like very restrained and sort of contained while you're doing these yeah, let me tell you my favorite thing my favorite thing is to get a script and look at the scene that we're about to do and have to figure out that scene. Because that's acting to me. That's So it's not, uh, I love that. By nature, Jim O'Hare would walk up there, hey, blah, 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 whatever stupid crap would come out of my mouth. And even if it wasn't funny, I'd still be funny about it or try to be funny about sure, it or how yeah. stupid it is or whatever. Um, but that's not Lenny. So I loved, I love shooting those scenes. I love... That's performance for me. That's that's the real point. Like what I do when I just babble, 
that's just me. I mean, I babble at home. I babble at, <laughs> you know. So for me, that's acting. That's, I know Lenny cannot do this. And so that's so exciting. We're about to roll. And I get all worked up because Lenny is about to go on stage. Yeah. He's never been on stage in his life. He doesn't know what any of this is about. And he's so scared and yet overconfident and, and whatever. And then it just, of course, collapses. So I, I, I don't know. I, I love it. Do, like what, did you sort of have any sort of inspirations as you sort of headed into this film? I mean, it's, there's a lot of things that are sort of stepping outside the box yeah. from what people sort of expect with you. Well, but totally the, out of the, the box, weird, yeah. The weird thing to me as I'm sitting here thinking about it is like it kind of in some ways reminds me of like a Norman Bates type character where sure. there's this like tight, restrained facade. But like, yeah. like at a certain point, he just like snaps. And I mean, obviously, you know, the movie he's already – fucked up but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. May maybe that's what's the interesting thing about Bates Motel but is, is that sort of like really exciting for you as it's just going so against type like so people exciting. are not going to expect this at all so me, exciting. I certainly didn't I mean I'll be honest I gotta tell you I uh, and Ned you know Ned and I have two very different goals for this film uh, Ned's goal has always been people need to see what you can do other than, you know, the good guy, happy-go-lucky, totally. funny guy. And my goal has always been, they need to see what you can do. You need to be directing mm, big features. So, I mean, we both have very opposite goals, which I guess is sweet because yeah, he, he's I mean, in it. Like, he just wants, shows, like, that friendship of 30 he, years. Like, 30, that's exactly. Because, awesome. you know, Ned is a big ad guy. He has a huge career in the ad world. But this is what he wants. And so I just want that for him. So, that's uh, And I think this film... Uh, Boy. See, now you're being nice again. Now you got I know, uh, okay. And hopefully he... Uh, he fails at doing that, yes, so he can never do it again. a huge disaster, and they fire him from his ad job. That's what I do hope. Yeah, no. it's, it's so bad that they actually fire him from his <laughs> The film is so awful, they can't even let, let him back in the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. No, but Ned, um, super sweet. he nailed it. I, I really feel him. And, of course, I'm close to it, so people could certainly disagree with me. They can go to hell. And, uh, no, but, you know, I, 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 if nothing else, we worked hard on this film. I mean, I think I think that's a tough thing, though, with independent film, is that it sort of falls into that same area of like mainstream film where everybody wants to classify it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because independent film usually sort of bleeds into so many genres, it's hard to classify a film like this. Is that something that scares you as an actor and so intently well, working on this? Because it's like. If you go into this and you're open-minded or you know what to expect, I'm sure you're really going to appreciate what's coming. But at the yeah. same time, if everyone's like, oh, it's, you know, Parks and Rec. It's just going to be a funny laugh movie. You're going to be like, what the fuck did I just Here's think? what's going to happen tonight is my guess. For those who are coming to see Jim O'Hare from Parks, you know, so at the beginning of the film, I'm a sweet man. And I think, it'll all, oh, there he is. And it's going to get some laughs and just natural. Like I have even done, you know, when I do benefits – I'll walk out and people start laughing because they think, oh, it's the funny guy. So, and then you start getting serious. And I was like, ooh. So I love that because especially in this film, yeah, the first 10, 15 minutes, things are fine. And maybe I'm just your every, average everyday guy. And then you're like, holy shit, what yeah. has just happened here? Yeah. And then it just goes, then it's a ride from there. Yeah, but by the time you reach then, you're like, what? I think the film's exhausting oh, in a sure. wonderful I way. I don't mean that in a no, negative I way. I think it's exhausting. Like, holy, what did they just put me through? Well, I think I think there's a, a level of your, you, then you make it very empathetic to the audience where they're like, you, you can sort of like feel for them. You understand like, what would I do if I was in that situation? I'd be yes. pretty freaked out too. And, and think about it. It was one bad mistake. Just one very innocent mistake. He picks, I can say, I think I can yeah. review. He picks up a hitchhiker. Had he not picked up that hitchhiker, would he have gone to Vegas and become a hit? No, of course not. That never, there, there's no talent there. But it would not, but have, it gone would near, not yeah. have been what it is. Yeah. Uh, and we all make mistakes. We've all done stupid things. He picked up a hitchhiker. Yeah, shouldn't have done it. Mom always told him not to. <laughs> well, yeah. Mom Mom's always told all right, him. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the lesson to take away from exactly. The film. Um, it's 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 really interesting to think about that. I love when people go against type, and that's yeah. sort of one of the things I appreciate most with a movie. Is that something? you hope to do more going forward? Is this hope something you hope really changes the way people perceive you? Because it is it is a stretch for the way people see you in a lot of ways, I guess. Well, and it's I, a stretch and it's, it. it's also scary because you could go, well, he didn't pull it off. You know what I mean? Like well, I mean, it, That all depends on expectations well, again. It's like of if, course. if people are like, this is a comedy, well, 
I mean, then you're really getting a different thing. But if you're like, I don't know, a black comedy or a dark comedy right. or something like that, then, I mean. And I keep, I, I couldn't stress that enough to people, even friends and family. You guys, this, this is, is dark. Not, uh, yeah. This is dark. You know, yeah. this is funny, but it's dark. Um, I love going against type. You get labeled in Hollywood is how it's done. So I am what I am. It's paid my bills for a lot yeah. of years, so I don't complain. But it is so great to get an opportunity like this. Many, many years ago, I did an episode of um, Diagnosis Murder, and I was the bad guy. And they wanted someone who you would awesome. never expect to be the bad guy to be the bad guy. Awesome. And I did a scene with Dick Van Dyke, who I bowed down to, because he's Fantastic. a genius. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after the scene, the producers came up to me and said, we have never seen that look on his face before. And I said, I thought I was in trouble. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, what should I do different? They go, no, 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 he's terrified. That's good. So you, you know, can scare Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, you know, and, and he's what a I lovely man. I would put that man. on my like CV. Yeah, you know? really, really. But you know, a lot of comic actors they always say they can be your best dramatic actors too. Oh, I we absolutely. We just a lot I of times don't get the that. opportunity. Well, I mean, look at what Robin Williams has done over the years. Uh, even even uh, I mean, lesser you, people kill me for saying this. You know, what I think he's a really good actor. Dice Clay. Yeah. Have you ever I seen him? That. Yeah. No, he's Fort really Fairlane. Good. Yeah. Uh, he's a that, very talented actor. I think he's a really good actor. Uh, you well, know, I mean, I, I think the bottom line with that, though, that I've always thought, and I agree with that statement, is that I think comedic actors understand timing. And yes. timing is something that you can use both dramatically and comedically. 100%. And, but here's what I'll say. I think, mm, I don't know how much I would say this without sounding like an idiot. You can, we love idiots. I, yeah, I don't think you can learn timing. No, I agree. I think you either have timing or you don't. You can hand me a, a sitcom script and I can tell you where the beats are I can tell you what's funny I can tell you where it needs to go uh, a lot of dramatic actors can't do sitcoms oh no absolutely I agree but most sitcom actors can do drama totally agree so I, it must be the timing I think it, I think it def, I, I 100% yeah. agree with that I that. won't say her name because I, I would never do it to her but I was working with a very famous actress uh, she was on Park so, but there was many so I'm not yeah, anyway no. she was up for a pilot a, a comedy pilot and she said would you work this scene with me of course so we work it, and at first I think she's joking around because it's so awful. And I realize she's not. She is normally a dramatic actress who does not know how to find the funny. Yeah. That's, I don't think, I, I couldn't teach it to her. I mean, I, I tried to tell her, well, I would hit this, I would hit that. But, but I mean, yeah, I, I, just, I, I 100% agree. I, I, I think not only are they better at doing it, I find it more interesting when it's it's more surprising. Like if a comedic actor is funny, like I guess it's surprising because I don't really expect it. Right. But at the same time, right. like it's not really that much of a shock. But like a comedic actor playing a serial killer, like yeah. he, or, or, or Robin Williams or whatever, yeah. like yeah. it is it is genuinely like what the fuck is going on here? It's awkward. And for an actor. And again, we're actors. That's the other thing you want to tell Hollywood. We're actors. Yeah. See, I don't just do comedy. I do drama. I do ridiculous. Yeah. I do sane. That's, I do, you know, we're actors. Hollywood, but yeah. It's Hollywood. It's, it's, and again, I've had a hell of a career, so I have no complaints. But yes, do I hope this film would lead to more opportunity in that world of dramatic? Hell yeah. Okay, so the film is Middleman. Uh, it's got a website. Middleman.com. Middlemanmovie.com. And uh, is there a release strategy, or is that just the best place to go, is the website to find out more information? I uh, think the best place, yeah. And then um, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out. I know uh, IndieWire gave us some great, hmm, great, uh, they released our trailer, which was awesome yeah. and exciting that they were into it. Um, was it Fangoria released our uh uh, Fangoria released our, our posters, our one sheets. So we've had a lot of like Very cool. uh, people have gotten excited about oh. it, and we've sold out the festival. We there we go. I, That's I'm sad. thrilled and unexpected. Uh, we went to a bigger venue and sold it out again. Very cool. I'm shocked. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. I, you, I hope Spencer. people check it out. It's, it is a really dramatic change from what people expect, and I, yes. I hope people check. I that promise out. it won't be Jerry. From Parks and Rec. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, Jim. I wish pleasure. you the best of luck. Thanks, Spencer. Appreciate it. T1000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This tech don't even try to bite the side of the sky. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.